Hi everyone, welcome back to Acres of Clay. Today we are picking corn. This is probably not something that you would see um, a modern day dairy farm doing, but um, Kevin's going to talk to you a little bit about the picker that we're using and why we're doing it and he's going to give you guys all the information. Uh, today we're picking corn. Um, we do have a 323 one row corn picker. This year we decided to drag it out again because uh, the price of corn is pretty high and we're not done chopping corn silage yet. We got like three days left on it yet. So with corn being over six bucks, we decided, because normally we do snaplage and we'll be showing that to you in a video soon. So we decided to do some high moisture ear corn and that way we could save on having to buy corn and uh, help us out on the financial end a little bit. And this picker here, like I said, it's a 323 one row. Not very fast, but it does the job if you need to do a little bit for, uh, to feed for short period of time but we retrofitted this one and then we're going to show you what we did so the husking bed on this was pretty well in non-working condition it was pretty bad so we took out um, the fingers the, we took the fingers out we took the rolls out of it and the chain that goes underneath that uh, takes your husk out and stuff. So basically we disassembled the husking bed and then we put in, took the drive that drives the husking bed or the rollers in it and we hooked an auger to it and if you come around to the end here you can see the drive mechanism. It's the same drive, same U-joint, same collar, but then we hooked it to an auger and we put a, a trough in it. And that trough then, as the uh, ears come up the first elevator, they drop onto the trough and then the auger shoves them down the trough into the uh, The auger shoves them down the trough into the elevator that takes it up into the wagon. So this way it's a pretty slick idea for running corn that's quite green yet. Because the husking bed, yeah, don't work with green corn and they bust a lot of them rubber fingers off. All you guys out there that know how, uh, or know about the uh, new idea corn pickers. So yeah, we drag it out when we are, you know, we got another week yet 
before we'll be able to do earlids through the chopper and uh, so this here kind of gets us by in the meantime so we got uh, to save some money on grain and um, as you can see here we, we're not running a husking bed we have the uh, some a lot of the husk are still on yet but to me that's fine for a cow feed but uh, yeah it does a really good job without a husking bed for the most part and uh, it it's feed that uh, we'll grind here today and we'll have more video of that. I'm standing next to our short day corn that we planted after we took off rye. Um, we, we harvested rye for the grain and then we baled the straw and after we took that off, which was in July, we planted a 78 day corn. It was either 76 or 78, I can't remember exactly, but this is what it looks like. Some spots it looks great where um, it's over my head so it's about six foot tall other spots not so well um, after we planted this we got like one good shower of rain and it came up within like three or four days shot out of the ground grew really well got real hot turned very dry and this was definitely stressed if you can see, some of these leaves here have tar spot, and you can see that it's already drying it up. That's what tar spot does. It just kind of kills the leaf. Starts, I don't know, I think it starts with the leaf, but um, dries it up, makes it look like it's mature or ready to harvest. This one's got quite a bit of it. You see that's all tar spot, which is a fungus, which is not which there is no way of getting rid of tar spot. It's just something that as farmers we're gonna have to deal with. But, um, so some of them have tar spot. Well, I would say, looking at it all, it looks like they're all affected by tar spot. To some degree, the lower leaves are definitely, the lower leaves are definitely affected a little bit more and they're the ones that are drying up first. Um, where the newer leaves are not, this put out a tassel a few weeks ago, and you can see little ears already forming. Um, how well this is going to do kind of depends on the weather that we have yet. Yeah, it's the end of September, and you know, it's going to take a little bit for them to form a decent sized ear. We typically get our first frost around October 10th. Last year, at this time, we have already had our first frost. So honestly, frost can come at any time. This morning's temperature was 47, so it's getting cooler, definitely. But now today it's 70 degrees. So if we, um, there's moisture now, we just got some rain. We got about an inch and a half of rain where it can put forth um, some energy to go towards making an ear. So as long as we don't get frost, I think we'll be okay with um, making an ear. I think it's already pollinated the way the silk is looking. If it's got a dark silk, it looks like it's already pollinated. And yeah, that's the, the corn. It's definitely not going to do as good as it could have done had we had adequate rainfall. But it turned so hot and so dry that it really stunted the growth. Um, will we try it again? I think Kevin probably would try it again. Either that or we would we would have put sorghum in here and the sorghum would have dried up, probably gotten hurt worse than the corn. Um, some of these corns are more drought tolerant than sorghum, so I know that the sorghum probably, most likely, wouldn't be this tall. So. Whether or not it makes an ear doesn't really matter because this is all for heifer feed. This will not go for the cows. Um, so if it doesn't make much for grain, it's not going to be a big deal, it'll just be filler food for the heifers.
up and you'll swing it that way and then I'll try and get it around it. Okay. That should work, right? 